And now, here's your host, David Heil. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Welcome to Newton's Apple. If you're curious about science, technology, or the world around us, you've come to the right place because we answer your questions. Today, I've got one for you. Would you believe me if I told you I just discovered the cure for cancer and heart disease and the common cold? Or how about if I said, uh, I have a device that's guaranteed to make the blind see, the deaf hear, and cure headaches, too. Sound too good to be true? Well, it is. But that's exactly the kind of sales pitch that quacks down through the ages have asked people to believe, and some, unfortunately, do believe. Today, we're going to take a tour of some of these so-called medical miracles with the curator of the Museum of Questionable Medical Devices in Minneapolis, Robert McCoy. Welcome, Bob. Is it okay to uh, shake your hand under I there? Guess, I guess so, David. <laughs> <laughs> what, uh, what is this contraption you're in? Well, this is an antique phrenology machine that's measuring the bumps on my head and printing out a paper tape telling what my personality's like. It's a 70-year-old machine. Um, sense of humor uh, says you're cynical. I'll have to work on that. <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. That's a pretty long printout. You know, I love these kinds of gadgets. It's like taking a romp through a Sears robot catalog or something. But Besides being sort of playthings, they're also rather serious in some cases, aren't they? Yes, lots of the things that I'm going to show you were used in the old days that people relied upon to cure such serious things as cancer and heart disease, when in reality they didn't help at all. Didn't do it at all. Well, let's take a little tour here. Okay. Come and take a look at the first thing I've brought along, which is a spectrochrome from 1938. It's based on the belief, of course, true, that the sun provides healing rays. Spectra meaning so it has something to do with the colors in normal white light. Huh? That's correct. So this has about six different colored lenses on it. What are you complaining about today? Uh, whatever red will fix. That's Well, what that's I'm... a heart problem, so oh. we'll leave that on longer there. Uh, the fella spent his life building some 10,000 of these machines. So all this is really is probably what? Just a white light bulb inside there and some colored plates that you just flip oh, back and well, forth? Oh, but you have to sit in front of it in the nude facing north under certain moon phase days. Uh, I don't think we'll do that work. today, Bob. Uh, <laughs> well, that's part of the ritual to make it work. Unless you did that, you didn't think it was doing any good for you. Well, now, the ritual is a, an important point, I think, here, is that if someone's caught up in a ritual, it's become somewhat self-fulfilling, doesn't it? That's correct. Okay. Now, if if I were to open this box up, find out that it was just the white light bulb, I wouldn't be too impressed, would I? No, you wouldn't. That's what the inventor did to keep you from doing that. He put lead seals on the screws so you couldn't open it up to see that it's empty inside. Okay, a little trick of the trade there. Come huh? over and let me show you some other things. A lot of times, besides colored lights, the idea of radio as a way of curing and healing was used. Ruth Drown invented this device, which you take a drop of saliva, put it on there. Can we try this? Yes, please. Okay, there's my now saliva. I'll close this up and hold it down. I'll turn on these detector <laughs> plates. And wow, it registers. Wow, 100. what, Bob? <laughs> well, you've got a, your saliva's about 185. Did you know that? <laughs> okay, I do now. I'll turn on a real 5 tube radio and set it for the same frequency as your saliva and turn on a transmitter to send out healing rays to cure you. Those are the uh, healing rays. Mm -hmm. Yes, you feeling better? I don't know, my saliva. I wonder how my saliva heals. <laughs> well, you know what's interesting, though? I can see where people would get carried away with radio waves because radio itself was sort of a mystery at that time. And, you know, we didn't know it was behind these black boxes with all the dials. That's correct. And the people who made these were counting upon this sense of mystery to convince you. Let me show you something that used magnetism over here. This is a Wilshire belt that uses magnetism. You put it over your head like this. Is this a big magnet? I'm going to turn it on. Now you feel oh, the vibrations. Vibrating. So this has got electric current going through yes. it, right? And it aligns the iron molecules in your blood. So, that it so will the package said, yes, right? So it will <laughs> make it absorb uh, oxygen at a much higher rate. Well, yeah. besides messing up our microphones here, probably, what do we got? Electric current going through here in a coil, which would create a magnetic field. That's right. Right? Okay. Now, to sell this, his salespeople had these little test coils oh, look that, at that put through there. And all that magnetism could be going through your body. And sure enough, the, the magic of a magnetic field lighting a light bulb would really impress you, That's wouldn't correct. it? Okay. Gaylord Wilshire sold enough of these to buy most of the land from downtown Los Angeles to the ocean. Oh, so this is Wilshire Boulevard fame. That's uh -huh. correct. This is a device called a color therm by Fred Gerke. And this device is such that uh, you sit in it. Oh, let's yeah. turn the lights down That's a little. That's okay. <laughs> you sit in it, That's put very your bare colorful. feet on there, looking at those colors. Ooh, it's beautiful improve your psychological makeup. Now, when the healer would take this magic wand, sort of, and put it over your body, it was useful for curing heart problems, make missing limbs regrow, regenerate missing organs, and just about any other thing you needed to have done. Probably removes the lint from my sweater, too. <laughs> it might do that, too. <laughs> now, basically, what do we have here? We've got um, glass tubes that are gas-filled, 
You put electric currents in there, and what you've got is like some arcing going back and forth, right? That's correct. I can feel it on my hand, and I can feel it here on my sweater as well. I also smell something. What's that? That's ozone. Oh, no, that's not too good for you, is no, it? No, it's not beneficial. It is harmful. So are some of these devices actually harmful? Well, oh, yes, lots of them we have are more, more seriously harmful than this device does and produce more injury. For example, this Actina from 1880 is filled with mustard gas, and you would put this big end to your eye to cure blindness and the small end to your nose to cure deafness. Now, mustard gas, meaning like just a drop of oil of mustard, so yes. it's not like the killer mustard gas, but, ooh, boy, it's a pretty strong smell. So it's you're supposed to do what with this? Put it to your eye until you can't stand it anymore 12 ooh, times a day. I can hardly stand it right now. <laughs> Another strange device with a poison in it is nuxated iron. It's something that is made up of iron pills and strychnine. People took strychnine in this stuff? That's correct. To do what? Well, to make you feel better, supposedly, but it didn't do much, but if you took too much, it made you quite sick. I can understand why. Now, you would never get away with that today, would you? No, but people were selling devices like this today, only they were calling it techniques to cure AIDS. For example, they would sell healing crystals to cure AIDS. They would sell such things as magic black radionics boxes to cure AIDS, using treatments of sending blood through machines that heated it up. A variety of things to cure AIDS that are really also worse. So we have we have sort of a parallel going on today as we did in the past. We have a, a new disease, AIDS, uh, relatively unknown. We don't have a cure for it. People who have that disease or know people that have it want to try anything, I guess, to find a cure. That's correct. And they're willing to take the risk. That's correct. But a lot of people used quack devices for cosmetic reasons. Let me show you something over here called a blood rub. This device was used in barber shops in the early 1900s to make hair grow. You're kidding me. No. Oh. Have you been using this yourself? Uh, I was completely bald before oh, right. I began using this. <laughs> Somehow I'll I don't believe that. I'll put this on your head like this. Okay. Turn so it will make me bald, huh? Now you're feeling any better with that? Whoa, well, I'm definitely feeling something. <laughs> this thing has got quite a rub to it. This is great, Bob. Thanks so much for bringing all these wonderful gadgets in. Medical quackery at its best. Uh, you haven't got a cure, do you, for uh, tangled hair? Uh, just a comb. A comb. We need a <laughs> doctor's comb here. We'll be right back. <laughs> Thank you.